Do you ever think about how hard it's going to be to stand out from the crowd once everybody is using these super powerful AI tools? Once everybody's using tools like Claude and Gemini and ChatGPT and as these tools get better and better, I don't think just having access to them is going to be enough. I've thought about this quite a lot. For me, the secret lies in collecting and curating and organizing good source material. And another fancy way of saying this is building and curating and organizing knowledge knowledge bases. Good source material can transform generic AI into a personalized powerhouse by selecting, curating, and organizing data that is specific to you. You can 10x the value of these tools and gain a true edge in this space. I'm convinced this is the number one thing we should all be working on as these tools get more and more powerful. Today I want to walk you through why this is the key differentiator, why ownership of your own data matters, and the different types of source material you can be looking at as well as a complete process for going about this and I don't want to just tell you I want to show you how just a little bit of source material can go a long way I'm going to show you prompts for doing research and gathering different pieces of material prompts to create content campaigns from that material and really how powerful the long-form content you create will be once you have good source material so the key differentiator in a data-driven world is having your own curated and organized data. I think it can be data about what you do, data about your customers, I think is very, very important. But the future of everything is data plus AI. This is not a one and done thing, unfortunately. This is a lifelong process. These are lifelong learning engines as you continue to use these tools and watch how you're interacting with them and gathering insights from all over the place, pulling these into your source material databases. And don't think of anything too fancy. These are really just highly organized text files is all you really need to be focused on. Ownership really matters because unlike generic information on the web, your curated knowledge base is your unique asset and it becomes fuel for AI powered solutions tailored specifically to your growth. You may be telling yourself, well, wait a minute, aren't these tools trained on like all of the information on all the internet? So don't they have all this data already? And in a way that's right, but in a way you can think about things that it might might not have. So transcripts of calls with your subject matter experts, transcripts of calls with your customers and clients and your team, feeding that into the AI, organizing it, building these knowledge bases, and then continuing to iterate on that process is what's gonna set you up for success. Again, this is my number one focus. I'll be doing a ton of videos on this. This is just starting to scratch the surface, but here are some things you can think about uh, collecting into these various knowledge bases. So company-specific documents, your procedures, your policies, allowing your team to access it, uh, things that are maybe be customer facing that you may want to use in chat bots or other resources any sort of informational text like I mentioned call transcripts are huge you know pulling in data getting the exact words that your team is using to describe your culture and how you might be able to improve on that culture similarly uh, words that your customers are using and how to make sure that's embedded in your marketing materials etc uh, any sort of creative content that you have out there good performing blog articles transcripts of your best performing videos or podcasts uh, process documentation is massive. Just having a, a clearly organized, high-level look at how each person does their job can be the very first powerful step towards automating some of that stuff. And obviously, code base, this is one that I think a lot of people uh, already are starting to understand. But, um, you know, collecting your code bases in ways that the large language models can, can access them is another area area thinking about you know reports that you you may have access to or trainings that you've gone to organizing all of that stuff uh, appropriately starting small we'll get to that in the process section it's easy to get overwhelmed with some of this but got to start somewhere and just think of this as a as a lifelong process so i want to just show you just to scratch the surface how a little bit goes a long way here looking at some research prompts and content prompts here jumping into the cheat sheet i create cheat sheets for all of my videos if you've watched any of my other videos you already know that and these are uh, basically recipes that i use on a day-to-day -day basis filled with all sorts of things each cheat sheet has 
has uh, more information that is not covered in the video. These are all available to my Patreon supporters. Immediately you can get access to over 70 of them and more growing each week. And basically the most important part of these are the prompts that you can just copy and paste into the large language model. So let me show you how to use these prompts to gather up some unique source material and let me show you exactly how much better the content we can create is once we have unique source material. So we're going to be using perplexity for research and Claude to create the content. So I'm just copying and pasting this prompt from the cheat sheet right into perplexity and looking for trade publications, online platforms that cater to a very specific audience in this case, VP of Franchise Development at Health and Wellness Franchise Brands. And let's see what it comes up with. So it pulled together a bunch of unique uh, online platforms and so forth that cater to these folks. I had to keep digging a little bit. Please search these sites for resources that specifically cater to just think about your audience here whatever problem you're trying to solve you can get creative with some of this stuff it got a little bit better and then I dug a little bit further looking for specific recent topics in those areas that cater to these people and I found something very interesting here boom this International Franchise Association economic outlook for 2023 from there I was able to quickly find that there was one for 2023 and that led me into um, a rabbit hole <laughs> that was very helpful. So let me show you what I did with that. Back inside Claude, I used this campaign builder uh, prompt sequence. So this is prompts one and two, looking at this unique source material. So the AI doesn't really have access to this unless you give it to them. And I'm saying from that report, please generate a detailed outline of stats and sentiments that my audience would be in interested in. And from there, we're going to use this second prompt from this information. Please create the four pillars or hubs of content that can form the foundation of a content marketing campaign targeted at this audience. For each hub, please create an ebook idea along with four supporting blog article ideas. So getting this to build out an entire campaign for us. Let's see what we got. So I'm dropping this all into Claude, which without a doubt, this is the number one for creating content, for writing uh, you know, articles or generating that type of thing. So if you're on a content marketing team, highly suggest you check out Claude if you haven't already. Uploading that guide here. And here's what we have based on this guide, this unique source material. It's pulling in all these different stats that cater directly to my particular audience. And what's great is we know that these aren't hallucinations because we've got that source material right there. We're starting to use the large language models as a reasoning engine. This is one of the things Sam Altman talked about a while ago, that these aren't search engines. Everyone's you know struggling because they're not finding good search results or they're hallucinating things like that they're making up facts but if you can give it good source material of like hey here's exactly what I want you to pull from here's an example of an output that I like mash this up and take the source material turn it into whatever your output is if it's a case study a proposal a resume whatever it might be giving it those things to begin with you're setting yourself up for success because look at all these great stats that you could never really pull out of chat GPT with any sort of a trustworthy way I guess so let's see here these are all interesting um, but I dug a little deeper I said is there anything else in this report any key stats related to these specific things I used an AI to figure out you know what are the specific interest areas of this audience and it said, you know, it, it didn't find anything extra there, um, but pulled in some things that might have be helpful for this audience. And now we're getting to some of the magic here. From this information, please create the four main pillars or hubs of content. So this is that prompt that I just read earlier. And this starts to generate a data-infused uh, content strategy just from this one source. So you can think about finding maybe just two or three sources like this um, that you can you know, cite in all of your different articles and all of your different eBooks, etc. And this stuff was pretty good. I thought it could be a little bit better. So I'm 
I'm just going to show you what I did to make it better. These are good, but if you revisit this from the angle of the services we offer, I added in some ideas about the services there and it matched it to the services. But I felt like if you look at this, it's a little bit generic. We kind of lost the data uh, piece of it that we had uploaded. So I nudged it back in this direction. I said, this is a little general, but can you tie this back to the data in the report? And now we're really cooking with gas here. And we've got these ebook ideas with blog uh, articles, each one highlighting these interesting facts that I think would really jump out to these the folks in this particular audience. So just with one little bit of source material, you see how we've created a full content marketing campaign strategy that is infused with information that really sets it apart from your generic listicles that ChatGPT tends to create. Back in the cheat sheet here, I want to walk you through just a couple more examples of how to use this for long form content. So these prompts using the stats from this document, please create an ebook. This was, you know, directly from that uh, strategy that we just looked at. There's going to always be some iteration. So don't think that, you know, if it doesn't give you back immediately something that you love, that it's broken or you don't know how to use it. You just got to keep nudging it towards your goal. Uh, then prompt two here, moving forward with drafting section one I using as many stats from the attached resource as possible. So this is again, long form content. We're going to create the outline first, and then we're going to get it to go section by section and draft these sections so we can get uh, basically an ebook or maybe even longer content we're looking at you know, uh, 10,000 words plus. I have a whole video on long form content called How to Write a Book with AI. I'll link to that right here. Uh, you can check that out. It goes deeper, way deeper into this. From there, we're going to look at it. Can any of these sections be arranged or combined for a better reading experience? And then we're going to look at also ways that we can improve the transitions between the sections. Uh, I'm also going to look at ways to infuse even more source material into this draft. Let me show you what I came up with. So here's that same report that I found using perplexity, using stats from this document, create a detailed outline for the ebook. And this was an idea that I got from the campaign builder prompt that we just went into. And it gives me this outline, very detailed, which is great for a long form piece of content. Now we're going to move forward with drafting each section. So you can't just say, hey, draft this entire ebook. You're going to be limited because it's only going to be able to return several hundred words when, you know, we're looking at a long form piece here. So we got to go section by section. And it is pulling this in with all of these awesome stats straight from that source material free of hallucinations. I said, okay, great. Now move forward with section, uh, this next section to B and section by section, we can go and build this entire ebook. Now getting back to source material. This is a prompt I use here. Can you please recommend additional data that I might be able to search for to enhance this section? It says to further enhance this section, please look for some of this information. So I just took this entire thing. I copied it into perplexity right here back into perplexity new chat string can you please help me find data and insights on the following topics and just crunch that right back in didn't need to edit it at all and it pulled together a bunch more ideas a bunch more unique source material free of hallucinations complete with citations here in perplexity that we can then use to improve that copy so i just copied all of this this beautiful little clipboard there. Copy that back into Claude and I've uploaded it here. Please update your draft with the following information. Please make sure to include citations and links appropriately. Here's the new information. And it creates a new draft with a bunch more data, a bunch more citations, a bunch more source material to make this way more impactful uh, to your audience. This is not something you can create just with generic AI. It's got all the sources right here. And that just was automatically just kind of copying and pasting, starting with just a few simple prompts in that cheat sheet and building out a very unique bespoke piece of content. Hyper personalization, folks, that is the key.
All right, so how do we do this? What is a good process step-by-step -step, for curating valuable source material for your AI system? So again, baby steps. You're not gonna do this all in one day. This is gonna be an ongoing process. Here's the process that I'm following currently. Again, this is all in the cheat sheet, but defining the goals. It's easy to spread yourself too thin. Right now, I'm really focusing on you know, my different audience, all the different marketing teams that I serve, the entrepreneurs that I serve in my coaching programs, taking the transcripts of all of our calls, editing those with AI to kind of find what questions does everybody have, what things really seem to resonate on these coaching calls that I have with them, building that knowledge base to help me steer what videos I should be creating in the future and ideally then building a bot that I can speak to that's basically one of my you know customers one of my clients I could say hey how do you feel about this video what should I add to this video what questions do you have about this outline before I go and create the video you can see how powerful these knowledge bases can become so Defining your scope, defining your goals, for me, it's really understanding my audience, making sure what I'm creating is valuable. Identifying initial sources. So this is something like when you first think of it, you're, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but then you start to see this stuff everywhere in your emails, in your you know calls and videos that you're watching, trainings that you're on, establishing standards. So how are you gonna organize this? This is what I'm gonna do, be doing a lot of in future videos, ways to organize and use these knowledge bases but you can think of it just being as clear and organized as possible using table of contents, um, using good subtitles, etc., uh, are a good way uh, ways to think about how to organize and format it. And then just testing it, you know. I think you want to be careful just throwing a bunch of garbage in there, just like we're going to put all of our transcripts from all of time in there, every podcast ever. I think it's going to confuse the model. So testing it, you know, maybe starting small with the really good stuff, seeing what you can can do to improve upon that and um, there is a video here link to this video uh, if you look at my past videos on automating any process you might want to think about taking this process itself and turning it into a custom GPT potentially so if that's a video you'd like to see let me know in the comments and I will think about working on that but thanks a ton for watching again I've got that cheat sheet as well as over 70 other cheat sheets that are instantly available if you become a supporter of my Patreon. Those are great recipe books. You can mix and match and personalize your different AI processes to suit exactly what you're doing. I've also got some coaching options in there, some great group calls that are happening once a week. And make sure to stay tuned because in the next video, I'm going to show you some ways to really break out of the uh, five paragraph essay that ChatGPT often responds with and really push these large language models to creating amazing first drafts of of whatever you're trying to create with them. So subscribe for that. It kind of builds upon this source material. This is a three-part content creation series that I'm working on. But otherwise, let me know what you think in the comments. If you had questions about anything, ideas for future videos, please subscribe if you're getting something out of these videos, and I will see you on the next one. Make your dreams come true, true.